Welcome to the St. Elizabeth of Hungary Chapel here in the Paris Center of the Church of St. Monica, St. Elizabeth of Hungary, St. Stephen of Hungary, here in the Yorkville section of the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Today is Saturday, the third week of Easter. We will begin with Mass in just a moment, and once again, welcome as we celebrate the Eucharist today. Oh, and our intention for today is the repose of the soul of Geraldine Kelly. Lydia. There he found a man named Aeneas, 
who had been confined to bed for eight years, for he was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. He got up at once, and all the inhabitants of Leda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha, which translated is Dorcas. She was completely occupied with good deeds and almsgiving. Now during those days, she fell sick and died. So after washing her, they laid her out in a room upstairs. Since Leto was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. When he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs, where all the widows came to him weeping and showing him the tunics and cloaks that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. Then he turned to her body and said, Tabitha, rise up. She opened her eyes, saw Peter, and sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And when he had called the holy ones and the widows, he presented her alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many came to believe in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Son of your handmaid, you have loosed my 
your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Many of the disciples of Jesus who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe, and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer walked with him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the sad things about the church these days is the absence of the presence of women religious and male religious. There are, of course, still nuns in the church, but there are relatively few in comparison to what they once were. And of course, nuns don't really teach much in schools or work in hospitals anymore. We, in the Archdiocese, we don't even have any Catholic hospitals anymore. And that's a sad thing because the presence of women religious in the church added much to the life and the diversity of the ministry in the Catholic Church. And uh, of course, the presence of women is an essential part of the ministry of the church. We certainly have many women who minister here at St. Monica, St. Elizabeth, and St. Stephen of Hungary. But I have been a priest now long enough, 25 years, that when I began, there were still many women religious. And I remember one day having a conversation with some of the nuns who worked in the parish where I was working. And we were talking about vocations, and I asked what made them want to become nuns. And they laughed. And they demurred, and they didn't share the stories of their conversions. But the one mother superior in the convent there, she said, but let me tell you one thing. The reason you join is not the reason you stay. And that has always stuck with me because I, of course, can reflect on that in my own life after 25 years of priesthood, that that would be the case for me. Indeed, I think it is the case for most of us, right? The commitments that we make in life a lot of times are made with a great deal of joy and excitement and, and, and hope for the future. But after a time, the joy and the excitement fade, and we discover other dimensions about that commitment that we did not know about and would not have chosen. Enter the disciples in today's Gospel. They were thrilled to follow Jesus. And when we speak about the disciples in today's gospel, we're talking about a much larger group than the twelve. We're talking about all the people who wanted to follow Jesus on the way, who wanted to be disciples, followers of Jesus, and listen to his words and put them into practice in his life. That was the group that was sitting there in Capernaum. That was the group that was listening to him as step by step he re revealed one of the deepest truths about the community that he was following and that he was forming. Namely, that in order to enjoy the fullness of life, in order to receive the word of God, in order to feast on it, meant eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of Man. Oh, today he says it's spiritual. It's the spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. Please don't mistake me. You're not going to be gnawing on my bones. But nevertheless, those words were so difficult for some of his disciples that they gave up on their commitment and they left him and no longer walked with him and followed him, no longer wishing to put his words into practice in their lives. They had made a choice, but maybe not a commitment. And then Jesus turns to the twelve, turns to the ones who were his closest followers and asks, and I've always thought this was one of the most poignant questions Jesus ever asks of anyone. 
Do you also wish to leave? Are you going to give up on your commitment? Did you even make a commitment? And then Peter speaks for the group, right? And he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we've come to believe, know and believe that you are the Son of God. The reasons they started were not the reasons they continued. The reason for the initial commitment grows and changes in the disciples and will be sorely tested on the night of the crucifixion. But because they made a commitment and stuck with that commitment, they saw not only the crucifixion, but the resurrection. And maybe that's the case with all of our commitments. I hope it is for mine. That even during difficult times, like the ones we're going through right now, if we hold fast to the commitment, we will see not only the crucifixion we are going through now, but also the resurrection. Because if there is one thing we celebrate during this Easter season, it is the fact that there are things that are stronger than death. Jesus Christ, his love, and his word. And thus also our commitment. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to give them strength and grace in proclaiming the truth fearlessly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For political leaders, may God grant them courage in passing laws protecting all life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who suffer from any addiction, may the hope of resurrection in Jesus give them strength in their pursuit of healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For this community, may the Lord place his hand upon us and guide us in our service to the sick, oppressed, or suffering. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, may they rest in the peace of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the soul of Geraldine Kelly, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we commend into your hands all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we make ready the altar and prepare our gifts. Sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May it be so. 
the Lord is the sacrifice which and ash for the praise and glory of his name and the of the Holy Church. Look, O Lord, upon the offerings we present to you in commemoration of Saint Athanasius, and may witnessing to your truth bring salvation to those who profess as he did an undiminished faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them you gave us companionship. By their intercession, true support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud amid witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and with with them the imperishable crown of glory, through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, Geraldine Kelly and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Monica, St. Elizabeth, St. Stephen, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look black not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your word. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Offer to one another for the sign of peace.
let us pray. Grant us, we pray, Almighty God, that the true divinity of your only begotten Son, which we firmly profess with St. Athanasius, may through this sacrament give us life and protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.